we decided that we needed to inspect the machine further using high precision metrology grade equipment. Now the following method we're using is the method that Highwind recommends and they're the company that manufactures the rails on this machine. So that inspection consisted of the following steps. Level the M MDF top to earth level. Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are on the YouTube channel Tools, Machines, and Innovation with two subscribers. This video called Shop Saber CNC Machine Review is quite literally the most extensive CNC robot review I've ever seen done. It's using equipment that far exceeds that of even most professionals. And the review in general is so extensive that I wanted just to put on screen here a taste of this video. I highly recommend you all watch this video. It's very, very interesting. It's very well done. Got a lot of great editing um, tools used in it. But overall, I wanna also cover the back and forth portion of the video with Shop Saber. And this is the portion of the video I feel that gets a little weird. And many of you are gonna see exactly what I'm saying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play from here. We'll analyze it from this portion. The first major issue which was the ball screw housing with loose bolts. We immediately reached out and contacted Shop Saber to show our findings and ask for a reasonable resolution. Right. And every time we expressed our concerns to them, we were sent to their tech department where their solution was to guide us through fixing the machine. Right. And of course, like any reasonable person who just bought something brand new, we said- for thousands of dollars. Well, we don't believe it's our responsibility to fix right. it logical when our inspection clearly shows it was damaged before it left your facility so after hours of labor investing thousands of dollars in equipment to inspect our machine we filmed part of this review and we said guys no bullshit this guy and his team has literally spent thousands of dollars the equipment that you see used in this video like i said you guys will see far exceeds that of most testing that any end user would have to do. I think they were trying to make a point and they made a very valid one. Sent it to Shop Saber. And finally we were contacted by one of their executives. So after Shop Saber reviewed our findings, they responded to the various issues we highlighted in our video. Right. First, the response entailing the two loose bolts. They claim they were loosened during transportation from their facility to our house. And when, now we checked every bolt on this machine and they want us to believe that somehow those two are the only ones that loosen during transport. Crazy things happen all the time. Is it logical what, what they're telling them? I don't, I don't really feel it is. Um, that's my opinion. That's all it is. But realistically speaking, any CNC robot should either have a lock nut used on all general fasteners or Loctite applied. And especially at the caliber of machine we're talking about with the cost associated with one of their pieces of equipment. I believe all of you would agree with that. But not the other 100 plus. Second, the response to the most damning evidence that showed Listen how to the this. factory machine top from their facility was uneven and that the machine was damaged before it even left their facility. Wow. Many of you have gone through similar experiences with other Manufacturers. Now here's where things get even more bizarre. So they blamed us for not escalating this issue enough to get it to upper management, even though we called and conveyed our discontent multiple times. So finally they, they agreed they would take the machine back. 
Hey guys, jump over to eDealers Direct Automation and check out my eBay store for the components used to make what you see in this video, as well as many others that you may not even realize you need. Of course, I'm always there if you have questions, message me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And of course, I do do custom engineering as well as consultations. Thank you for watching this video and your support. Take care. And refund us what we paid for it, but only after they received it back in their facility to make sure it wasn't damaged. So think about that for a second. They're gonna make sure that a machine they sent out damaged isn't damaged before they give us a refund. Now, addition- Well, of course, that does sound illogical. I totally agree with them. But I also feel that as a vendor myself, they probably wanted to make sure that no modifications were done, especially with the extensive amount of testing they did. So I can balance that logic on both ends. Um, I definitely see what he's saying, but I also feel that there are a lot of times, me being a vendor myself, that I've seen end users modify machines in some capacity and then claim that, hey, this doesn't make sense or you know, this is out of tolerance. You can have a lot of different things happen. So it's totally understandable. Things like this need to be looked at at a much deeper level. And of course, they're protecting their investment. They get the machine back, they make an assessment. Additionally, if we wanted our money back, we had to sign an NDA preventing us from posting this review. Now, I don't know if you caught that. They are saying to him, in order to get his money back from a machine that was shipped to them damaged, they would have to sign an NDA so that they would not release this video on YouTube because, of course, they didn't want the exposure. Now, that just is strange. I mean, I don't, I don't really understand that logic. Many of you, I'd like to hear your responses to it, but I've never seen this. I've never heard of anything like this. I don't know why they would want him to sign an NDA. Machines ship damaged all the time. The right thing to do as a vendor, if it, if it is substantially damaged and requires anything that would require the machine being shipped back, they would send him a new machine. That's typically what happens. Um, I don't see as a vendor why they'd want to eat it in the total loss. They would try to just sub out another machine. Logical. I don't know if that was something they offered to him. He denied it. But realistically speaking, what we're hearing here is very, very weird. I mean, why you'd have to sign an NDA to get your money back so this video doesn't go live, it just doesn't sit well with me. Something just doesn't sound right, mainly because logically, you can tell this is a very intelligent person. You could tell by the way they're using their equipment. Whoever this is as a company, these are smart individuals. These are not the average enthusiasts. Let's put it that way. Eve, we have a unique situation and I want your expertise with this because I've never dealt with anything like this. My audience is listening and I want you to explain if someone was to purchase a CNC router online from a vendor and they received the router in, it's damaged, and it also doesn't meet the accuracy stated by the company after doing thorough testing so much so that I decided to perform a review video on the unit that I could provide the company showing all the problems that actually I've experienced. When I do that, I request for the company to issue a refund and in order for them to give me a refund, they let me know that I must sign an NDA. Is this legal? I'm not a lawyer, but let's break this down. If you bought a CNC router online that's damaged and doesn't match the advertised accuracy, you have rights as a consumer, especially if you're in the US. The company can't just force you to sign an NDA to get a refund if the product is faulty. That sounds like they're trying to silence you to avoid bad press. Federal laws like the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act and general consumer protection laws mean they can't dodge responsibility by throwing up barriers. If you sent them your review video showing the issues, they should either fix the router, replace it, or refund you without such strings. An NDA could limit your ability to share your experience publicly, which might be their way of controlling the narrative, but it's not standard to tie a refund to one. I'd say it's questionable legally. Check your local consumer protection laws or talk to a lawyer. Want me to look up specific refund rights in your state?
No, thank you. But it would be interesting to know if, and again, based on your expertise, if it's possible for companies to request that an NDA be given to somebody uh, prior to them actually filming a review. Well, companies can ask for an NDA before you film a review, but it's not really enforceable if you're just a regular buyer reviewing honestly. They might try it to scare folks off, but under free speech protections, like the First Amendment in the US, you've got the right to share your genuine experience with a product you own. If it's unsolicited pressure tied to getting your money back, that's dodgy at best. It could even border on intimidation. Legally, they'd struggle to hold you to it unless you willingly signed something beforehand, which you didn't. Bottom line, don't let them bully you into silence. So I'm going to end on this. First, ShopSaber wanted you guys to know they completely stand behind their quality control, even though they didn't specify exactly what that quality control was. And I've got to be honest, I don't think I've seen a single area on this machine that suggests they have any quality control. The big question, should you buy a machine from ShopSaber? I think you guys know the answer to that. Before we go, uh, we want to just to tell you guys, the whole reason we purchased this machine in the first place was to make a prototype. So we needed the machine to meet a certain specification as far as how accurate it could cut. Now, I can honestly tell you, it doesn't matter what we do, this machine will never cut at, at the accuracy that they claim it can cut. And um, we actually came ac across a previous lawsuit where essentially the same thing we have going on, they have going on, where the guy owned the machine for over a year and still wasn't able to cut a job on it because it was just so inaccurate. And like I said, it's almost identical to our story. So what we're doing is we're setting up a, setting up a GoFundMe the end of part one of this video and as extensive as it was this gentleman made a part two and he's going to continue to make videos on this topic but part two is really interesting and i hope you stay tuned to hear the rest of this because i feel there's a lot to learn and once again if my channel teaches you anything it's be careful it's interesting to point out that a company as large as shop saber and also a company that proudly presents that they're made in the usa would have issues like this but it should open your eyes to pay that much more closer attention to who you work with stay tuned